सो हेलो एवरीबडी एंड वेलकम बैक टू ब्रैंड न्यू वीडियो एंड इन दिस वीडियो आई विल बी सॉल्विंग प्रॉब्लम सी दैट वॉज सॉ जीरो फ्रॉम राउंड एट हंड्रेड थर्टीन ऑल्सो माई वॉइस मे बी अ लिटल ऑफ टूडे बिकॉज आई हैव फीवर फॉर द लास्ट फ्यू डेज एंड आई एम स्टिल रिकवरिंग फ्राम डैट एंड फॉर द सेम रीजन आई एम ओनली मेकिंग वीडियो फॉर प्रॉब्लम सी टूडे एंड आई विल मेक वीडियो फॉर प्रॉब्लम डी इन द मॉर्निंग सो स्टे ट्यून फॉर डैट इज़ विल so that was it for the intro and let's start with the problem now so in the problem <coughs> so in the problem we have been given an array right so something like a1 a2 a3 so on up to n where each element ai uh, is from 1 to n we also have been given an operation in this operation you can choose any element uh, x right and for all the indices i for all indices i uh, for which ai is equal to x you can set all of them to ai equal to 0 right so you will choose some element x and for all the indices i where ai is equal to x you will set all these indices ai equal to zero. So that's the operation, and using this operation minimum minimum number of times, using this operation minimum number of times, you have to sort the array in non-decreasing order. Sort in non-decreasing order. So that's basically the problem. So given the following operation and some array. Use the minimum number of operations and sort the array in the non-decreasing order, and report the minimum number of operations, and report the minimum number of operations. So that's the problem. So how can we solve this? So first of all, we will try to think about how our final array will look like, right? Because we want to sort our array in non-decreasing order, right? And we are using some zero operations, right? We are making making some elements equal to zero. So how will our final array will look like? So if you try to think about it, our final array, it will be non-decreasing order, right? And it will have some zeros. So it will be something like this: zero, 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 and then some number of positive elements, right? And these will be sorted in non-decreasing order. These will be sorted in non-decreasing order, right? So our array will, our end array will look something like this: this is my a one, this is my a two, so on up to a n. So my end array will look something like this, and as you can see here, my operation is only able to pr produce zeros, right? My operation is only able to produce zeros. So all these zeros here, all these zeros here, must have come from my operations, right? And the rest, and the rest of the array was left untouched. The rest of the array was left untouched. so we will take advantage of the following fact and we will try to find this break point right we will try to find this break point right so we will only apply operations only apply operations on left of break point right and right elements will be untouched right elements will be Untouched. But there are there are some conditions for that also, right? Because when you are checking for break point, you have to make sure of some con conditions also. So what are those conditions? So when you are checking for a break point, <coughs> let's say you have a let's say you have a break point here. You have some elements on the right side, and you have some elements on the left side, right? so you want to check if the following point can be a break point or not if the following point can be a break point or not so how can you check that as you know the right side elements should be untouched right the right side element should be untouched and as these elements will be untouched and as you can see here they need to be in non decreasing order they need to be non decreasing order so your condition one is uh, one is that uh, the elements on the right side 
suffix you can say suffix should be already in non decreasing order right and the second thing you can see is that the zeros all the zeros are only on the left side right all the zeros are only on the left side there are no zeros on the right side right so how can you make sure that all these zeros on the zeros are on the left side right for example let's say we have some element x x x and le let's say we have an element x here also so when you will try to apply operation on x when you will try to apply operation on x it will be a zero here zero here zero here but it will also make a zero here right so that will not obey your condition right so that will not obey your breakpoint condition so you also need to make sure of this case right so the condition number two is make sure all zeros lie on left side right so if we have some element x here that element x should not be present on the right side right because then we can apply operation on this and the zeros will remain on the left side so that's the two conditions that you need to check for right so how can you check for that so now let's start with the solution right so now we have found a solution right we can start iterating from we can go from 4i equal to n minus 1 up to i equal to 0 and then we can check if i can be a breakpoint check if i can be a breakpoint how can we check that to check that we have to check two conditions right condition number one is that the right part is non-decreasing the right part is non-decreasing how can we check that as you can see we are iterating from n minus 1 up to 0 right so we already know information about the previous element so we can just keep a uh, we can just keep a running counter for this so we can just keep a running counter for this to check if the right part is not decreasing or not just keep a running counter for this and as soon as v of i is greater than v of i plus 1 just break right because if you get the following condition then the air then the right part is no more decreasing right so that is for condition one so what can you say for condition two now for condition two you have to make sure that all zeros lie on left side so how can you check for this so to check for this you can use some prefix pre-calculation you can use some prefix pre-calculation how so so if you check here your maximum frequency of x your maximum frequency of x is equal to 3 right so you can use your uh, prefix pre-calculation to check if all the elements if all the elements on the left side have reached their maximum frequency if all the elements on the left side have reached their maximum frequency up to the breakpoint right so you can keep two prefix arrays you can keep two prefix arrays prefix of i that will tell you number of distinct elements up to y right and you can keep an another array prefix completed of i it will tell you number of elements that have reached maximum frequency that have reached maximum frequency so to check if all the zeros will lie on the left side if all the, all the zeros are lying on the left side then at that index prefix of i should be equal to prefix 
completed of pi right that is the second condition right uh, why so because let's say you have a break point here right let's say you have a break point here right and let's say your prefix of i is equal to 4 right and your pre uh, and your prefix completed of i is equal to 3 then what that means is that there are four different elements there are four different elements on the left side of the breakpoint right for example x y z w w y z something like this right so our, our prefix of i equal to 4 tells us that there are four different elements on the left side and our, our prefix completed of, of i equal to 3 tells us that only three of them only three of them are completed right only three of them are completed but one of them still has an element left that needs to be inserted in the array right so at least one uh, uh, exactly one of them will have an element on the right side for example le let's say our y is completed let's say our z is completed and let's say our w is completed then that means our x is not yet completed right so our x will have an element on the right side so when you try to apply an operation on this, when you try to apply an operation on this, it will become zero and this will also become zero and this will not obey our second condition anymore, right? So it is important that my, if my prefix of i is equal to four, my prefix completed should also be equal to four, right? So that's why the only condition that is required is if prefix of i is equal to prefix completed of i, right? So that is the only thing that you need to check for. So now we have a solution. So for every i equal to n minus one, iterate up to zero. And to check if i can be a breakpoint, right part should be non-decreasing. That is the first condition that can be that can be easily checked by keeping the running counter. And if v of i is more than v of i i plus one, you can easily. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the second condition is that all the zeros should lie on the left side. For that, you can use some prefix pre-calculation and check that your prefix of i should be equal to prefix of completed of i. And if i is a breakpoint, and if i is a breakpoint, then your answer is just equal to distinct elements before breakpoint, right? And as you can see here, we are already finding it, right? Number of distinct elements up to i. So we already know the value of this. Our answer is equal to distinct elements before a breakpoint that is already equal to prefix of i. So my answer will be just equal to prefix of i, right? So that will be the entire solution. And if you guys want to see the code for this, here is the code. So I keep two arrays, prefix and prefix completed. Uh, max frequency to make my prefix completed array. So uh, I will take in my array and calculate the max frequency. And then if then I will just calculate my prefix array and my prefix completed array, right? And then I will just start from the end. If I will first check condition one, if v of i is more than last, then the suffix is not decreasing anymore, right? So I will just break here. Otherwise, if prefix completed i is equal to prefix of i that is i'm checking my condition 2 here then my answer is equal to prefix of i then i can just print out my answer at the end and that is the solution so if you guys have a doubt do let me know in the comments or join my discord server i will be more than happy to answer your doubts there and i will see you guys tomorrow morning with a brand new video right so see you guys then also, if you guys don't know, Continue Newton School is offering a full stack development course. The course is uh, over six months long and it is totally based on pay after placement model and you don't have to pay anything. There is zero hidden fees, there is zero upfront fees and they are granting you a minimum package of rupees 5 lakhs and the average package is rupees 7 lakhs and the highest package is over rupees 26 lakhs. So it is a very great opportunity. Also, all their mentors are from top MNCs like Google, Flipkart, Zomato, etc. Also, they will get you placed into the top MNCs as well, like Google, Flipkart, Zomato. Uh, 
सो यू कैन लर्न फ्रॉम द मैंटर्स डेट आर वर्किंग एट दोज कंपनीज एंड यू कैन लैंड अ जॉब एट दोज कंपनीज योर सेल्स ऑल्सो यू डोंट नीड टू वरी इफ यू गाइज थिंक कि या मेरे को भी कोडिंग आती नहीं है मे भी फ्रेशर में कोई बिल्कुल नहीं आता है द कोर्स इज ओवर सिक्स मंथ लॉन्ग एंड दे विल टीच यू फ्रॉम स्क्रैच सो यू कैन स्टिल साइन अप फॉर दिस एंड इफ यू गाइज आर लुकिंग फॉर अ करियर इन द टेक फील्ड दिस इज अ वेरी दिस इज अ वेरी क्रिएट हेड स्टार्ट दैट यू शुड साइन अप फॉर एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू लैंड अ जॉब आई हाईली आई हाईली वॉच फॉर दिस एंड इफ यू गाइज वॉन्ट टू साइन अप देर बिल लिंक डाउन बिलो एंड यू कैन गो एंड साइन अप फ्रॉम देर सो या बी श्योर टू साइन अप फॉर दिस एंड आई विल सी यू इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो बाय